Coming up next, the author of No Sweat Public Speaking. If you're afraid of public speaking, stay tuned. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. And welcome back. On the back cover of our next guest book, it says that public speaking is most people's greatest fear and that some even fear it more than death. Well, that may be extreme, but some people do go to great lengths to avoid having to speak in public. However, from time to time, we may all find ourselves being called upon to make a speech, some other presentation, or even just conduct a meeting. That's when the sweating begins, and that's why Fred Miller titled his book No Sweat Public Speaking, How to Develop, Practice, and Deliver a Knock-Your-Socks-Off Presentation with No Sweat. Fred's a St. Louisan and a coach for people who want to improve their speaking skills. Fred, pleasure to meet you. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Don. Thank you very much. Why do so many people dread the notion of having to get up before other people and speak? Oh, I think it's just afraid of the unknown. I think as as we grow older, for some reason, we get afraid that we're going to embarrass ourselves, make a fool of ourselves. You know, it's interesting. I give the example. My grandson, when he was one, wasn't quite walking, but he would pull himself up, fall down, and then pull himself up again. But somewhere along the line of growing up, we fall down and we don't pull ourselves up. And it's that fear of the unknown and making a fool of ourselves. But, you know, there are a lot of people who are called upon to speak time and time again and still never get over that fear. Well, you don't want to get rid of it completely. Actually, I was in Toastmasters for years, and yeah. we talked about you don't want to get rid of those butterflies. You want to teach them to fly in formation. <laughs> so you want to have a little bit of that nervous energy, but not so much that it knocks you out. Yeah. You better tell folks what Toastmasters is because not everyone knows. Good point. Toastmasters is an international organization. There are two tracks, leadership and public speaking. And I advise anyone who wants to improve their public speaking skills to visit several clubs because they all have their own flavor and join one of them. Very A very encouraging environment. They have a structured number of speeches that you give. And the best part of each meeting is when you give a speech and people evaluate it. And uh, sometimes they can be brutally honest about what well, they've seen and heard. Well, don't help anybody if you say, great speech, Don, can't wait yeah. till the next one. Yeah. You've, you've seen, I've attended some Toastmaster meetings uh, here and overseas, by the way, and uh, it, it is a fascinating process to watch the growth of people who go through all of this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we would get calls. I, I used to take some of the calls, and it might be a guy says, I'm an accountant. I'm really good at my computer doing this, but my boss says, if I'm ever going to make partner, I need to do some presentations internally and externally. Can you guys help me? And then to watch somebody like that blossom, it was just great. Well, as you point out in your book, about 75% of the people are afraid to do it. But let's let's help those who are listening who would like to uh, become less fearful and better at what they do. Uh, where is the beginning in the process? Is it uh, when the boss comes in and says you're doing the presentation tomorrow, uh, or is it the planning? I guess that would have to be the beginning, but is it uh, in, in terms of planning what you're going to say and how do you go about it? Good point. What you want to do is have a structure to the speech. You can't just get up and wing it. So there's an opening, a body, and conclusion. Basically, tell people what you're going to tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you told them. Two other components are often overlooked. That's the title of the speech, and that's one reason I named it No Sweat Public Speaking instead of Speaking 101, mm -hmm. and the introduction. Too many times people give someone their bio as an introduction. You've probably been introduced that way. But an introduction should answer three things. Why this subject, why this speaker, and why now? And then have that structure to your speech and let people know what you're going to do. Well, you're talking about the, the introduction also of the speaker. And you oh, yeah. point out in your book, which is something that I hadn't thought of before that makes such great sense, is don't have somebody else write the introduction to you. Absolutely. You write it. And go Why? over it with them and tell them how important. The introduction is an integral part of the speech. It's like the king's trumpeters blowing the trumpet before the king comes in. It's like the... Uh, master of ceremonies at the circus before the main acts come in, but it sets the stage for that speaker. Well, what what sort of information should be included there? I mean, you can go overboard. We've all heard those introductions right. that are longer than the speech itself. Well, in this case, say, why this subject? Well, public speaking is most people's greatest fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact is that speaking opportunities are business and career opportunities. That's the reason they have the speaker. Our speaker today was in Toastmasters for a long time. He's written a book about public speaking that tells why he's here, gives a little bit of my credentials. Help me welcome Fred Miller. It should be relatively brief. Yeah. Now, you talk about the opening of the speech. 
and I know that you have several different uh, methods for getting getting into it. But regardless of which of those that you choose, you know, we've all heard about writer's block. And if you're delivering your first public presentation, whatever it might be, it's difficult to figure out how to begin. So go over some of the suggestions you have for figuring that out. Well, you want to grab the audience's attention from the get-go. So as an example, I would say picture this. It's Monday morning, and your boss calls you in his office, and he says, Don, as you know, this Friday is the most important day of the year for our company. It's our annual open house. 100 of our best customers, 50 of our best prospects are going to be here for the entire day. The president of the company wants each person to give a 15-minute presentation. I've got you scheduled for 1.15 right after lunch. Right. In people's mind's eye, they're going to see something. Well, in your book, you say what you're likely to say if you're really fearful is that's the day I'm going to schedule my colonoscopy. colonoscopy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that that's w one thing I suppose you can do. But uh, if you've got to take the bull by the horns, what next? Oh, you want to practice. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. You know, I, I speak to people. I say, is anybody here an athlete? I say, what sport? Guy says football. I said, well, you just show up for the game, right? Mm -hmm. Or are you a musician? You just show up for the concert. No, you got to practice. I mean, Steve Jobs, tremendous presenter. If he gives a 45 to hour and a half presentation, he's introducing a new product, he will have practiced weeks. And this is a guy who's great, but practice weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's practicing, it's videotaping yourself, getting a trusted advisor to tell you how to do it better, recording your voice. Tough to listen to your voice the first time, but practice will do it. Yeah. Uh, could you over practice? Boy, I don't think so. You know, I read something the other day. Nancy Durat, she spoke at TED. TED is a big organization, costs a lot of money to go to, and they give presentations. 14 minutes, she practiced 14 hours, and she's a pro. But, you know, it's like, like studying for a test. Maybe <laughs> the day before you want to stop. Yeah, I think a, a certain spontaneity, not that they're all spontaneous, might get lost by overdoing it. Oh, that's right, and you want to know your stuff. So if we yeah. talk about notes... I use a mind map. Mind map is a visual. And mind mapping is uh, the consummate tool for decision making, problem solving, and, and speaking. So if I look at a, an icon, I know the story. But if you try to read it, I think that's where you get messed up. Yeah, yeah. explain the mind mapping before we take a break. I, I'm not sure everyone understands that. Okay, uh, as an example, if you're going to plan a speech linearly, like in a diagram, you might put my speech. Roman numeral one, two, get down to three A. Like an outline. Like an outline. Usually you get down to four B and you go, whoops, that really needs to be two C. The problem with going in an outline form, you're trying to organize thoughts before you develop them. Mind mapping was developed by Tony Bizan, an English professor in the 70s. And he tried to bring together the left linear and the right creative sides of the brain. So you start with your paper in landscape mode, start in the middle, and then branch out with your subtopics. So if I'm looking at an icon of, uh, give you for instance, I'm looking at an icon of a candle. Well, that's meditation. I can talk about meditating, practicing your mind's eye. I think we'll have to refer people to the book because this is a little more complicated than most <laughs> of the advice you have. Uh, having having gone through the book and looked at some of that, it does require a, a little more attention than we It's we'll, a visual, yes. It, it is a visual kind of thing. Uh, Fred Miller is our guest. He is the author of No Sweat Public Speaking, subtitled How to Develop, Practice, and Deliver a Knock Your Socks Off Presentation with No Sweat.